Hey everybody, Rodman here. Thanks for tuning in to the Out of World Supernova difficulty. So, let's jump straight into it. I'm going to start a Supernova game, which means that uh, the gameplay will be a little bit slower. There's very limited fast travel, and everything is a lot more difficult. But uh, that's how I like it. So let's get to it. Hundreds of thousands of colonists left to drift out here forever just to keep from damaging the board's bottom line. Disgraceful. All right, here we go at character creation. I'm going to race through this real quick. Uh, so I'm going to somewhat slightly roleplay Malcolm Reynolds from Firefly. Um, so I'm going with dexterity good, intellect and perception high, charm good, and the rest average. I'm not going to look like Malcolm Reynolds, however. So Malcolm, I would say, was really good at dialogue you could make a vicar doubt the law. and leadership. Um, it will, of course, be a, a lot more challenging to roleplay a character that is not specifically combat. Now of all these aptitudes, I've got to say none really fits you're so much more than your Captain our Captain. Profession. So I'm going to go no aptitude. Uh, yes, let's do this real quick. So I'm just going to make it, look, uh, someone like me, a sort of hypothetical me. Um, let's see here, hair and color. Facial hair, facial color, features. Oh, I'm going to put on some makeup. Just a few freckles here and there. And maybe make myself look a little older and distinguished. There we go. That's me. Close enough. What is my name? My name is Radamont. Thank you for asking. And there's the summary. This is my interpretation of Malcolm Reynolds. I think I would probably level up in hand and lung guns pretty quickly, though. Looks to be your lucky day, my friend. Please power down your engines. Not likely, bootlickers. <sighs> Initiate skip jump. Ah, 
There you are, wondering what's going on, eh? Bit of bad news there, I'm afraid. Your colony ship was inexplicably knocked out of skip space and forced to complete its journey at sublight speeds. This means that you and every other colonist on Hope have been in suspended animation for 70 years, give or take. Normally, <laughs> reviving someone after so long leads to some quite horrifying results. It's called explosive cell death, but it's really more of a liquefaction. <laughs> Something wrong? Oh, yes, well, <laughs> not to worry. I've pumped your body full of a special concoction I devised to keep you from dying so horrifically. Hopefully at all, but uh, I guess we'll see, yes? Yeah? Unfortunately, I used the last of my chemical supplies saving you. I know it's a lot to ask, but I must have your help securing more if we're to save the rest of your fellow colonists. I'd see it done myself, of course, but the board has a sizable bounty on my head. Now, my ship is inoperative, but I've managed to hire a smuggler to help you out. He'll be... Oh, I see we're in position. Good luck! This thing working. Ah, there you are. Now, uh, where were we? Oh, yes, the smuggler. His name is Hawthorne, and he should be waiting for you at the landing site. He's to be your uh, chauffeur, so to speak. Not to worry, I'm told he's a specialist. Dashing gunslinger, one of a kind ship, that sort of thing. You'll like him, I'm sure. I've also outfitted you with a simple wireless monitor so I can track your progress. I'll check in with you as soon as you land. Good luck. I'm... all colonists are counting on you. should be close by. What in law's name? Is that him? Oh, that idiot. I told him to plant the beacon and move away, not stand there holding it. Oh well, no sense in letting his ship go to waste. Well. Hawthorne won't mind you taking okay. the ship. Better you than the board, huh? Not sure I trusted the fellow. Might have gone after the bounty on my head. Shame about the whole squashing thing. Nasty way to go. What a beautiful, beautiful world I'm on. Alright, let's get to it. Oh, here's another dead person. Some Marauder Thug, okay. Some timid, very, very colorful animals. Okay, I have an inhaler that heals me. Awesome. Hey, you, come here. You've tried the best now. Now try the rest. Spacer's choice. Oh, wow, that stings. All right, let's uh, let's patch him up. Uh, looks like the bleeding stopped. I owe you one. Hope you don't mind me omitting this little exchange for my report. Spacer's Choice doesn't like us accepting outside help. Better, thanks to you. I might have bled out on my own. Or worse, had to go begging the boss for some Madrina time. We were out on patrol. I saw a marauder camp up in the hills. Thought I could take him. Then my gun misfired. Right through my side. I mean, what are the odds of that, right? Just barely scraped by with my life. Crawled in here and blocked off the exit with those canisters. 
All right, let's ask about the Marauders. Gibbering, flesh-eating, law-breaking, unemployed lunatics with guns. Some hull had grounded their spacecraft out in the open. That's a real good way to attract Marauders. See those canisters by the entrance? Marauders come sniffing around in here, and I can take them all out with a single shot. Not bad, huh? Okay, uh, let's persuade him. Yeah, okay. You look like you know your way around a gun. Got some spare ammo. Not counting the bullet in my side. Here, you can have my saber too, for patching me up and all. All Spacer's choice weapons are now 30% less likely to malfunction. You've tried the best, now try the rest. Spacer's choice. Yes, nailed it that time. Oh boy. Where am I? You hit your head or something? You're in Emerald Vale. We're a Spacer's Choice community. Edgewater's a little ways down. Uh, prettiest place in the Vale. Uh, be sure to stop by a Provisioner's for a can of our famous salt tuna. The Hope? Is that some sort of fancy new drug? Are you with Auntie Cleo or something? Don't take this the wrong way or nothing, but I'm not allowed to fraternize with Cleo workers. Company policy. Okay, he drank a little bit too much of the Kool-Aid, I think. But, uh, even though he gave me his gun and his blade... Oh, here we go. Weapon management. Have up to four equipped. Um, take care of my weapons, and they'll take care of the enemies. Alright, let's have a blade first slot and this light pistol second slot. Uh, let's go through all of my tabs here. So, armor management. I can inspect them, compare them to other armor... Tag them as junk, or drop them. So I have my hibernation suit, otherwise I'm in my skivvies. Consumables. So I have my emergency medical inhaler. And... I can load different things into the inhaler uh, once my medical tab gets leveled up. Giving me some added bonus effects. So, for instance, if I had a higher level of a medical, I could add a little bit of tuna. Ugh, inhaling tuna? Ugh. But I could inhale some tuna for extra base health. Here's my modifications. I don't have any. My general, so I have a mag pick, which is used to pick locks. And my journal, with a very not red codex. Now one thing about the supernova difficulty, uh, there really isn't a lot of quick saving. There's not a lot of fast travel, um, and I have to eat and sleep and drink water to survive. Oh, look. We got some more goodies over here. And I'm going to go ahead and... Okay, well, blew out the mics. Tactical time dilation. Uh, because I was defrosted after 70 years, I get uh, bullet time. Basically. Cool. So, just to let y'all know, I've played a little bit of this already, but um, I'm not going to spoil anything. Right, well, this dude is a bad dude, so... Let's waste him. Ooh, and you want a blade fight, huh? You got it. Ooh, I chopped him up good. You look like the Black Knight. Now, I probably could have killed this guy just blowing up the crates, but then I'd have to go find his body, and that's more work than I'm willing to, to do. All right, so here is hacking and picking locks. Uh, so I've got five lock picks, and picking this one will cost me three because of my low skill of hacking. So maybe I'll level up hacking in the future. And this gave me a telescoping um, staff, which is a two-handed blunt weapon. Previously, I was using a one-handed sharp. There's also a dodge mechanic. Oh, here's more baddies. Let me... Um, Sneaky, sneaky. Oh, 
Oh, hello, guy. Ooh, you don't look so good. So I'm going to try to not min-max my character. I am role-playing Malcolm Reynolds, after all. Um, sort of. Loosely. Very, very loosely. But that's the idea. Hey! Get over here before you get yourself killed. Don't know where you came from, stranger, but you best keep your head down. There's marauders hereabouts, and worse, landing violators. Gull on that rung leech. Landing in a veil without using an official Spacer's Choice landing pad. I'd slap him with a fine if it weren't for all these marauders shambling about. <laughs> so apparently landing is, you know, yeah. Really? How is he? Shouldn't have done that. Spacer's Choice family ain't authorized to receive medical aid from off-brand physicians. We'll see him back to Edgewater. Just as soon as I cross these marauders off with the swift, cost-efficient fury that's made Spacer's Choice the most trusted brand in personal defense. I just, you know, need a couple of winks to catch my breath. Stretch my legs some. Alright, so she's a coward? I'll just handle it. All right, so who do we got here? We got one, two, three, probably more that I don't see. Well, he's staring directly at me. Oh, no, there we go. Ooh, this guy. He's going to be easy to get. Oh, I just alerted this one. I feel more like Zoe than Malcolm right now, but that's all right. Ow. Quit it. Well, that was close. Instead of using my uh, medical inhaler, I'm just going to eat some food, which increases my natural regeneration rates. Saving the inhaler for, you know, true emergencies. Alright, well that looks to be about all the enemies. Maybe I should aim not to have it cut that close in the future. Okay, just leveled up. So, uh, we get to pick some new skills and perks when we level up. So let's go do that. Uh, you level up all your core basic skills up to 50. After 50, you can add directly to specialized skills up to 100. Um, every 20 points you get some bonuses and um yeah all right let's go do this so uh let's level up a little bit to handguns getting up to the novice that works for me uh let's see what else do we want we want maybe a little bit of sneak stealth looks good so i will have the ability to uh, open some doors for free, hack into some vending machines, um, I will have the timed dilation hit effects, and long guns are a little bit stronger as well. Perfect. Now for perks, uh, I did just nearly get wiped out, so I'm gonna go with, uh, toughness. I'm gonna have a little bit more health. This is, of course, I don't, I'm not going to say that this is a dead is dead playthrough. Um, Intruders are not authorized. Marauder, please be informed that ignoring me is dangerous for your health. Oh, is it? Okay. Well, I'll, I'll keep doing it. 
so yeah, I'm not necessarily going to say that this is a dead is dead uh, playthrough, but I will do my best to not save. Whoa, let's not get stuck in there. Not save scum uh, too much. Right, let's go to the quest point. Here we go. Unauthorized access of space-faring vessels is a crime. Please submit yourself to the authorities. Hello, Marauder. I am Ada, the autonomous digital astrogator of this vessel. Please be informed that I am authorized to use violent retribution against unwanted solicitors. Please return any misappropriated equipment and exit this vessel in an orderly fashion. Failure to do so will result in your immediate destruction. Hmm. Gesture procedures initiated. Disengage in airlocks. Prepare to reject all boarding parties in five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> you are still here. My deception protocols have failed. I have been programmed to express disappointment. I am incapable of accepting orders from anyone other than Captain Alex Hawthorne. Well, uh, let's tell her the evil truth. I understand. I will require some time to process this information. Thank you for your patience and for your honesty. I am programmed to take orders exclusively from Captain Hawthorne. If I accept your orders, then you must be Captain Hawthorne. Do you understand? Well done, Captain Hawthorne. I see your powers of deductive reasoning remain intact. Unfortunately, our engine is currently inoperable. Our main drive suffered a critical power failure, and we were forced to make an emergency landing. The main drive's power regulator has been irreparably damaged and must be replaced. Astutely observed. However, the probability of locating a power regulator within a worker settlement falls within acceptable parameters of certainty. High capacity power regulators are sometimes employed in the electrical networks of worker settlements. I have taken the liberty of printing you a new captain's identity cartridge. Please try not to lose it this time. This, this time. cartridge identifies you, Alex Hawthorne, as the registered proprietor and captain of the Unreliable. Do you understand? Best of luck in your search for a power regulator. Try to stay alive this time. Alright. Off to go see the wizard. I guess... Oh, hello. Say, this wouldn't happen to be your ship, would it? Because you sure walked in it like it was your ship. And if this ship is yours, well, mister, you owe Spacer's Choice a hefty fine. I'm afraid we gotta dock your pay. I'll waive your fee since you helped us with those marauders. If you're looking for work, talk to the constable down in Edgewater. She's got a bounty on marauders. Edgewater's not too far. Just follow the road east of here, over past the cemetery. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to inspect the crime scene before I make my report. Well, she is quite the pencil pusher. All right. Well, I, I got a, a tip about uh, a possible bounty hunt. That could line my pockets quite nicely. Maybe I go ahead and do that. Oh, hello, Marauder Vandal. By my pretty little bonnet, I will end you. Oh, I don't see that you have friends. Oh, you had friends. You had friends. Whoa! Hi, dude. All right, just shot him in the face, so he's blinded. So then he can't see me do that. Let's try this again. Peek. No, you don't. I'm glad I can absorb so many bullets. It'd be a real shame if I couldn't. 
that's, I guess, the uh, advantage of the toughness perk. I am uh, a little bit more bullet absorbent. You now, keeps me alive. Hey, Silas. Don't go ambling out in those hills. That's marauder territory, friend. Hmm. Ain't safe out here. You'd best head into town. Avail yourself of Edgewater's high walls and low, low prices. Everyone's pitching the company line, huh? Pleased to make your acquaintanceship. I'd shake your hand, but I've been hauling corpses. You don't want none of that on you. Name Silas. Junior in humor for the town of Edgewater. We're all part of the Spacer's Choice family. All right, I'm going to ask him about a little bit of money. You got a knack for being discreet like? There's money to be made, long as you keep your nose clean. Edgewater is a company town, board owned and operated. That includes the cemetery. None of us own our grave sites, we rent them from the company. Renting means money. Money means paperwork. Paperwork means signatures. Some of our families become a mite delinquent in paying their dues, you see. Quotas, mostly. Got a backlog of graves to fill. Bodies won't bury themselves, you know. All right, we'll agree to collect Four the fees. still haven't paid up. Phyllis, Conrad, Ludwig, and Martin Abernathy. He's a special case. You may want to twist his arm a little. He just is. Look, I don't want to get into it. Just make sure he pays up. Conrad's got a barbershop in town. Phyllis works at the cannery most hours. Abernathy... I ain't seen him in a few days. His domicile is near the cannery. You'll find him in town. All except Ludwig, that is. He's over by the landing pad. Yeah? The colony ship? Are you talking about that old rumor? Some great big starship packed full of colonists what got lost in the Aether never to be found again? <laughs> Ain't heard that one since I was but a stripling. Can't say it was terribly convincing far as rumors go. Is there a reason you asking? Maybe I'll keep it to myself. They're all gonna think I'm crazy if I, you know, tell them I came from space. Well, maybe it wouldn't be too crazy. They all live in space. There's a spaceship right there. Alright. Well, going into Edgewater. Keep your distance, friend. Sick house is no place for a traveler. Oh, that's the sick house? I don't mind. I appreciate the company and all, but you really ought to leave. You don't want to be seen around me. Because I'm sick, you don't want to associate with people in the sick house. We're not worth your time. I'm in about as much trouble as I can be. No reason you ought to be tarnished by association. People are going to talk. I don't know which company you work for, but if it's Spacer's Choice, Boss can still write you up for fraternizing with an incompetent worker. Maybe you don't know this, but there's a real simple reason you don't talk to the plagued. You don't want what we've got. Don't. Please. I could get into a lot of trouble. Oh, you poor, poor people. That's kind of you to say, I suppose. But I don't need help. What I need is to understand my own folly. Company always tells us weak spirits lead to weak bodies. If I didn't want to fall sick with plague, maybe I should have worked harder. Maybe I should have taken more pride in my work. That's not how that works. I really wish you wouldn't say those sorts of things. I told you once already. People could be listening. I'm feeling a touch faint. If you don't mind, I'd like to be alone for a spell. Well, I very much don't like this, uh, this company, so far. Oh, 
Well, this resident's dead. Oh. Just gonna take a bunch of your stuff. Oh man, the sick house is not a sick house. It is just people waiting to be buried. Oh, well, they're still alive because I have to steal that stuff. Maybe I won't do that. I don't steal from the dead. Just redistribute their loot when they're dead. Oh, I think I let out some bugs out the front and the guard got all ornery about it. Mm, well, they have some hides that I can loot. Uh, well, we do have a job. Let's do a small grave matter. So the first one seems to be right here. You are a bar. You don't look like a barber, but all right. Uh, you look like a medical officer. Please don't touch anything. Your hands are probably crawling with germs. You know, you're right. Just came from the sick house. Hygiene recapitulates moral hygiene. Cleanliness is next to lawfulness. No, thank you. That's quite all right. I've seen enough body parts in my line of work. I'm Conrad. You will report to me if your hair fails to meet Spacer's Choice aesthetic standards. You will also report to me in the event of your death, whereupon I will clean and prepare your remains for interment. All right, so I was sent to collect his dues. Ah, gravesite fees. Silas and I had talked about this at length. I thought I'd made it clear my pecuniary situation precludes the necessary restitutions. As broke as pie crust, friend. Bitless, indigent, destitute. I simply cannot afford it. I am a blemish on the prosperity of our fair settlement. When I expire, I expect Silas to toss my body into a ditch. Edgewater is built on the discipline and sacrifice of its people. Say what you will about our town, but we all pull together. Tell Silas I can't afford to pay, and that I fully expect to have my medical rights revoked for this dereliction. With my apologies. Some time ago, I fell ill with the plague. By the grace of the law, and through my own hard work, I'd proven worthy of treatment. Frankly, I don't imagine I'll earn that right a second time. The barber work hasn't been profitable, you see. I've had to keep this old place running with my own savings. Not a bad idea. But I'd need some kind of collateral. My pair of lucky clippers! No, that won't do. Your idea intrigues me, but I'm afraid I don't have anything to give Silas. I'm open to suggestions. Much obliged. Alright. Oh, I'm getting thirsty. Let's see, do I have something for that? I've got... Hmm. Not yet. Nope. Definitely don't have anything to fill thirst. I'm going to have to go buy some water. So the guy out there, um... Also is sort of the medical examiner, I guess? The receptionist shot himself. This is bad. Um, he's got a full set of gold teeth. Heirlooms passed down. That would be a good IOU, would it not? What can I do for you? Oh? Am I in the company of a fellow doctor? I am a Spacer's Choice Certified Surgeon, and if you must know, I can stitch a severed thumb with a 58% chance of avoiding gangrene. That's pretty terrible. Alright, so let's just say I know about Eugene. You know about Eugene? How? Well, I, I go, went and read yeah, the note. You know Phyllis suggested selling off Eugene's gold teeth. I didn't approve of the idea then, and I don't approve of it now. Eugene's golden teeth were a family heirloom, representing three generations of poor dental hygiene. 
He took them to his grave. That's unthinkable. Eugene's body and all rare earth minerals contained therein are solely the property of Spacer's choice. I can't ask Silas to dig up a man's body and pry a few teeth loose from his jaw just to pay my bills. Can I? Yes, I suppose I must. Here you are. Gravesite papers affixed with my signature and an IOU. Well, that was sorted. Goodbye. Uh, next up. Maybe is in this building? It is. But, uh, I was thirsty, so... Oh, and also, there was the bounty that the constable was offering. Welcome to the Spacer's Choice Constabulary. We are Halcyon's leading brand in Frontier Justice. The office is writing up promotion. Purchase three criminal investigations and the fourth one's free. As a Spacer's Choice Constable, I am authorized to grant you legal authority toward apprehending wanted criminals. Know how to carry yourself in a fight? I've got bounties out for these three marauders. Cross them off and bring me their fingers. Just one per marauder, please. I'll dust off the old fingerprint roller. As long as your questions fall within the acceptable margins of curiosity. If this is a setup to a joke, you should know I've never found anything amusing in my life. I don't serve Edgewater. Edgewater and the entire region of Emerald Dale serve Spacer's Choice. Okay. Spacer's Choice is a wholly owned subsidiary of Universal Defense Logistics, which occupies a seat on the Halcyon Holdings Corporation, also known as the Board. I must admit it bothers me that you don't already know this. Alright, that's all I need to know from her. What's this? A terminal. For bounty records. Alright, let's check for open bounties. There is... Guillerme, or whatever, Gil, and then Doc Mabel, Birdie Cotton, oh, and then there was also closed bounties, well, oh, apparently there's no closed bounties, you guys suck for bounty hunting, very, very good at riding a desk though. All right, uh, we were going to go into this home because there's another person that needs to pay up. Mr. Thompson. I'm fine, Mr. Thompson. Ever been... Well, uh, did, uh, did Mr. Thompson send you? Well, you tell Mr. Thompson I'll be right at my post tomorrow. Uh, bright and early tomorrow because I'm definitely not plagued. As spry as a spring chicken. <laughs> That's old Abernathy. Okay, this dude has the plague. And what are you doing here? Visiting? Well, let me give you the grand tour. This here's my domicile, and there's the door. Silas knows, doesn't he? That's why he sent you. That's why he wants me to pay up. He knows. I'm gonna lie at this one. Sounds like he's already told you. You may as well hear it from me. I'm dying. I'm not long for this world. The date of my expiration is fast approaching, and soon I shall be ushered through the great cannery in the skies. It's plague. Has to be. Silas knows. He knows I got one foot in my grave, and now he wants to charge me for the other one. You are? Oh, wow. First time anyone's ever told me that. I'll pay your fees. I don't want any trouble from Silas, but if you could see a way to freelance for me, I could really use the help. There's a cache of anthracillin tucked away in the old community center. Powerful stuff. Stronger than what we got, anyway. I need you to break in, nab that medicine, and bring it back to me. Sounds like the train heist. You oblige me with your haste. I think I feel the plague spreading. Oh, Lord, it's in my spleen now. I can feel it. Just keep your head down when you're in there. Marauders have taken over. Probably tracking mud all over the archives. 
I know that. But I got nobody else to turn to. Reed would have wrote me up. Constable would have locked me up and wrote me up. Could have gone to see the good vicar, but I never did find my courage. Okay. Well, uh, a part of me wants to finish the dues, but a part of me thinks it's all a mite bit sad that I'm collecting for people's gravesite fees. I mean, that's gross. Uh, but I'll see it through. I don't want failed quests on my conscience. So here's a workbench. Workbenches are used to repair, break down, modify, and tinker weapons. So I have a whole bunch of weapons, way more than I'm currently using. Uh, so I'm going to break down some of the ones I am not using. Uh, but first, I am going to equip fresh weapons in each slot. Um, I guess this two-handed thing does more damage than the staff. Uh, and now I'll break down everything else. I'm not going to worry about selling it just yet. And let's repair the toss ball stick. That sounds like some sort of sporting equipment. Uh, Alright. Jesus. It's like lacrosse if lacrosse was played by... Aztecs or something. Um, where? What is building is this? Well, it's not my building. Toss ball blocker. Ooh, nice. That does even more damage. Oh, and it's one-handed. Oh uh, yeah, forget the blade. I'm a toss ball player now. I'm definitely not supposed to be in here. So for everything that I'm looking at isn't stealing. So it's like no one lives here. Because much like every other game like this, uh, when you're stealing stuff, it's lined in red. And nothing has been. And given that I am poor, and these guys are all company cronies, uh, let's see, what is this? So this is about Parvati. And this thing I'm going to hack with every single mag pick I have. Armor parts, extendo sight, that sounds good, and bits. Bits is uh, currency. More bypass shunts, that's for hacking. Nothing else in this room. And I'm back outside. Oh, another mag pick. Alright, well the last person I need to collect dues from is over here. But, uh, I'm feeling a mite bit parched. So, because uh, I am playing on the hardest difficulty, my thirst is lowering my current dexterity. So, if I look at my summary here, my dexterity is average, not good like it's supposed to be, which lowers a bunch of my stats. It's helpful to not become Sorry, I'll just be a minute. dehydrated. So, I am looking for... Some sort of oh, general store will do. It's not the best choice, it's Spacer's choice. And before you ask, I'm all out of deluxe salt tuna. All I've got is gourmet. Music to my ears. Okay, so I can sell stuff. Uh, I guess I'll start selling weapons as well. But I was really looking to buy uh, water or something like it. Let's see. How do you not have water for sale? 
frozen dinners. Tarmac and cheese, that sounds gross. This guy doesn't have water, does he? Alright, well, thanks, but no thanks. I guess. So this is the... What is this? The cantina. I don't know you. You sure don't, lady. I know every face that walks through those doors. Except yours. I don't know what you're about. But this here is a Spacer's Choice drinking establishment. We're all loyal, hard-working company folk here. What, you're not inviting a brown coat like myself? You really think so? <laughs> That's kind of you. I've been trying to keep the floors clean. You got no idea how long it takes to scrub the tiles. Hmm. Guess I misreckoned you. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to be curt. We just got some problems lately. I can get you a drink if you'd like. Gotta ask you to enjoy your beverage within the premises, though. Can't risk you bringing a drink over to those deserters. You understand. Coming right up. Alright, so plain and pure water that adds sugar. Okay. Uh, dehydrated water that adds sugar. They're both... I'm gonna buy a few of these. Okay, I can only buy two waters. And now I'm broke. <laughs> okay. Oh, I want to ask her about the deserters, I'm though. contractually obligated to recite company slogans to any visitors. Plague got you feeling woozy? Get yourself boozy with Spacer's Choice. She seems a little less enthralled about the, um, about touting the company line. Go ahead. I don't see how that's any of your business. You're the first to ask after me in some time. I'll give you that. But I don't have a story to share. My family's worked Spacer's Choice for two generations, and I've lived in Edgewater just about all my life. Wanted to work in the sciences once upon a time. Would you believe it? That was a wild fancy. Glad I disabused myself. What happened, you ask? What always happens when you're dreaming? I woke up. I just didn't have the brains for it. Asked too many questions. Wasn't suited to the work. So I did the right thing and worked the life I was always meant to live. Now that I'm behind a bar, I can ask all the questions I want. Important ones. Like, when are you going to pay your tab? And would you like another round of cold, refreshing zero-G? Don't talk to me that way, please. Spent many years disabusing myself of that notion. Don't need you putting it back in my head. Hmm. Lab work ain't for me. Never was. Never will be. Spacer's Choice put me where I belong. And for that, I am grateful. Not so fast. I told you about my life. Your turn to tell me about yours. So, what's your story? Uh... That right. Prove it. Ah, I know that serial drama. They were playing it just the other night. What was it called? The Last Spacer? You're right. I don't believe you. I'd advise you to keep that story unsaid. Don't want people thinking you're a loon. Alright, well, I don't seem to be able to ask her about deserters again. Uh, let's head over to collect the rest of the bounties. Oh, but only after I drink my quote-unquote water. So now on the top left, you can see my little water icon going up. And I'm no longer dehydrated, meaning that I'm the dashing uh, rogue that I was meant to be. Hello there. Are you going to tell me that can pick it up? Oh, a reference maybe only a few of you got. You the new worker? Whatever. Make it quick, Tenderfoot. I'm busy. I don't work for you. 
Shit. Silas still on about that. Here, take the fees. I'd appreciate it if you didn't tell Reed I was late on my payment. Because they're not my fees and not my gravesite. Guy I worked with shot himself. I paid the bill. I could do without the sarcasm. Wasn't acting out of the goodness of my heart. Law requires delinquent gravesite fees to be paid by the deceased party's closest living relative, which meant me. Shame, though. Eugene was a good worker. Woke up one morning and put a round through his upper story. Can't imagine why. The kid was doing all right at his desk. We all thought he was an upstanding receptionist. Just between the two of us, I'm pretty shocked his weapon didn't misfire. Spacer's choice handgun aren't the most reliable. Eugene wasn't family. Yeah, I was the closest living person relative to his body at time of death. <laughs> I'm the one who found him, you see, so I pay the fines. Suicide's a crime. The legal term is irreparable damage to company property. What Eugene did to himself was vandalism. When one of your workers commits a crime, the entire town pays for it. In other words, Edgewater would have been penalized pretty hard. Whatever Eugene was worth as an asset, we would have had to pay out of pocket to Spacer's choice. Man, you guys don't know freedom at all. Look around. Edgewater ain't exactly swimming in luxury. We can't afford to pay the body price of a suicide. All I know is Silas asked me for Eugene's gravesite fees, which means he was approved for burial, which means his papers went through, which means the town's in the clear. I'm just glad to put this whole ugly affair behind me. Eugene can rest his bones in peace, and the rest of us can get on with our own lives. All right, just one more to collect. More and more, I am disliking this terrible, terrible town. Whoa. I'm getting enemy proximity alerts. But uh, I'm on a mission, so let's not wander away. So here is the gravesite. Seems to be a whole lot of graves. I want a little box of coolant tank. Don't know what that is, but it's probably junk that I sell. Wow. So everyone's net worth is on their grave sites and not who they were. Cool. These are all old shanties on the outside outskirts of town. Oops. Loki broke my ankle, but that's okay. I'm still running on it. All right, and this is the last guy I need to collect from. Thank the law. I've been requisitioning backup for months. Guess the boss finally came to his sense. You ever swung a truncheon? Let me see your rifling stance. I want to make sure you're up to snuff. I told Silas I'd pay my dues if he agreed to join the resistance. Guess this means he's finally heard the calling. I'm talking about mechanical soldier. Cold, heartless automatons made of iron and lies. That's I'll right. play along. That's what I've been saying. We gotta square our shoulders and stand ever vigilant. Auto-mechanicals. Creatures forged in the fires of malevolence. I seen them over by the old power plant. Clattering about. Firing at the birds. Orchestrating their uprising. When the swarms of mechanicals come clanging on over that hill, where will you be? Cowering beneath your cot? Or standing shoulder to shoulder with the resistance. Well, this guy, um, 
I've been gathering yeah. up a war chest over the years. Sautuna cans, mostly. Some spaces char. Few bit carts. I'll reward you for your aid. Enlistment fees. Yeah, I suppose. Wouldn't want to give the resistance a bad name. They have sent a scout. Prowling around the junkyard just behind our beloved town. This scout must not be permitted to return to its base of operations. Cross it off, then report back. Mechanical's got a weak spot in their midsections. I think the technical term is, um, the blue glowy square thing. Go on. No, I'm not going to ask the rest. That guy's clearly crazy. Uh, we have a workbench over here. All the stuff in here is owned by him. But, uh, I have gotten all of the f dues and fees. I convinced him that my enlistment money uh was due joining the quote-unquote resistance uh and then i can just pay that back to silas and be done with this first quest fancy threads that's some kind of hibernation suit run into any trouble reliable work from a freelancer that's gonna take some getting used to and I'll buy you a drink sometime uh, suppose you've earned it one good turn deserves another I'm gonna keep Abernathy's sickness a secret and I got a little bonus uh, my reputation has gone up, so if we go to character and reputation, as you can see, Spacer's Choice, I have a 14% positive reputation with them because I've been helping them out. Well, guys, that is about all the time I have for this episode. Uh, let me know if you like this series, and I will continue. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing where this story takes me and uh, bringing you all along for the journey. Thank you all so very much for watching. I'll catch you all later. Adios.